In the pursuit of trying to understand all things mechanical, we're about to tear this engine down. Welcome to this teardown series where it's all about getting into the internals of these engines to get to understand them better. Oh, this one is a tight one. I don't know about you, but the only way that I get to really learn is by getting my hands dirty. Now, I'm not gonna get my hands dirty, I'm putting gloves on, but it is exactly that. Gloves on, tools out. So the very first thing we're gonna do is drain the oil. The reason for this is because when we are down in the depths of this engine later on, we don't really wanna deal with an oily engine then when we could just resolve the issue right now. The challenge that we have with this particular engine though, and you'll see this stand here, is that we're a little bit unsure about these mounting points. And so this has to stay here, but it's a little bit in the way. But, oh well. So the technique is to push it in, even when it comes to the end of the thread, and then you have control over the flow here. In looking at this oil, I don't see any Spots. It smells terrible. It smells like fuel. I can see the fuel on top of the oil here. But, yeah, there's no metal, no metal debris. So that's a really good thing. Now let's just try and make sure that it doesn't mess all over the floor. All right, with that draining, we're going to come over here to the oil filter. Now, under normal circumstances, what I would have insisted is that we open it up, you know, cut it open. But because of the state of the oil, I don't think that that's necessary. We would have opened it up to try and see inside of those fibers if there were any metallic flakes that had collected there because this is definitely part of where it will collect. But again, the state of the oil is really good and so I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. With this now off, let's move on to our thermostat housing, our distributor, our water pump and then also come here to the intake manifold which includes our carburetor. Okay, All right, perfect. Here we go. All right, well, that's not gonna work on your spanner. 12. Okay, I'm pretty sure I've got a ratchet spanner. Let's take a look at this. It's a little battle worn, and I think the first and most obvious thing here is that it's got a hole here that they have tried to repair. If we come over here to the housing itself, the first and most obvious thing is that there's no thermostat. I mean, quite literally nothing there. Also a little bit crusty, uh, but then look how rusted out these pipes are. I'm glad that this is also gonna be coming off. With the housing off, we can now move on to our water pump here. This is a clutch fan, and I'm not 100% afraid with exactly how to take it off, so I'm just gonna take it all off together. I don't wanna be fiddling and faffing and all of that. So let's get into getting this water pump off. Damn it, I'm stuck. Okay, we'll just leave it there. Use one of these, rather. Just tell you, ratchet spanners are the best. Would have taken an age without this. Okay, time to liberate this. Yeah, there it is. So you can see a little bit uh, rusty. Yeah, a little bit dusty, but uh, there's our water pump. Now we're gonna see if this engine 
actually turns. Oh, it doesn't turn very well at all. Now the real test, let's see if this was actually kept in a garage. The way we'll do that, of course, is turning the engine. So let's, yeah, there we go, there's some turn. But man, it's tight. Come on. Okay, it's getting a little bit looser. Oh, oh, there's some bad, bad spots there. Yeah, that's a tough spot. It's gonna be interesting getting down into the middle of this to see what's actually going on in here. But there's some really nasty spots here. Yeah. Did you hear that? Okay, well, she turns, but she doesn't turn so cleanly. So, it's good news, kind of. We're now gonna move on to our distributor, and yeah, then we'll take it from there. Yo, yo, that was tight. I guess this uh, would have been used for venting or something. We'll take a look at that. But whoa, look how dirty this thing is. Wow, this is terrible. <laughs> it would never have run like this. Never mind anything else. This is appalling. Okay. Please cooperate. Okay, now with this out, you'll remember that in that uh, Will It Start Peugeot video, we were struggling with timing. And this is exactly how it works. When the timing is unlocked, we can then move the distributor around and change the ignition timing. We were struggling to do that with the part one of the Peugeot video, and so we were struggling to get her to actually start. But in this case, we're all good. Oh, there we go. We've got a pinion gear here down the middle of the shaft. And then, of course, if we come here to the tip, it looks a little bit like a screwdriver. And that's because this end fits down there into the oil pump to ensure that there is oil circulating around the engine. And, of course, the pinion gear is there to help with the timing of the ignition. Well, wow, it's got a tiny little condenser. Anyway, let's put this together so that we don't lose the rotor. Oh, it's in the oil. Darren, please retrieve. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna we'll splice this in, Darren, like it was meant to have happened. Come on, where is this thing? Where is it? Come on, come on, come on. Okay, I think I got it. I must admit, I'm really impressed with this carve. It's actually really nice and loose. Take a look at that. I mean, really nice and loose. I don't know what's going on inside, but it's pretty darn good. Feels like a 13. Great. It's off. Not too much build up here. Let's check this. Let's see. Okay, so this one works. That one doesn't. Yeah, definitely stuck. Definitely stuck. So a little bit of work needed if this is going to be reused. So what I have done is I've left some of these nuts on these studs here for just in case when I take this last bolt out that the manifold decides to fall. 
I don't think it will. It will probably stick on the studs, but you know, just in case. Better to be safe than sorry. Looking good. There we go. All right, well, it's off. You know, it's an intake manifold, so not too much to report. You can see the water channel is also a little bit uh, dirty, but otherwise, yeah, not too much to report. Let's move on to our fuel pump. It's pretty good. So pulleys are terrible to deal with at the best of times. This one has been standing for a really long time, so I'm quite worried about it. Let's see what happens. Let's first take this bolt out. Nice and easy. And now, let's see what happens here. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. Fantastic news. I know, I'm flabbergasted too. Okay, now the timing cover next. Oh, that was loose. That's bigger. Let's check. Uh, we're gonna have to do that on the sump there as well. Yo, there we go. Well done, little machine. Okay, that's a 13. That's a 13 there. There we go. Have I missed one? I've missed. Must one here. And there we have it. A little bit broken here. Dirty, but otherwise not too bad. Let's check this chain. Oh, look how loose that chain is. Over here it's okay, the tension is still working. Just have to worry. I don't think that's any good though. A little bit at a time, but they're coming off so nicely. Look at that. Okay, there we go. Oh, fantastic. Let's see this tensioner. Oh, it's in good nick. I wonder if it's been replaced. Okay, great. Okay, that's the chain guide. Let's look at that. You can see a little bit worn. Okay, we're now going to Go in through the top. Well, her condition is beginning to reveal itself. She's not in bad shape, a little bit rough around the edges, you know, a little bit of water that would have got stuck in the engine. There is, of course, that other concern as we're returning it. it could be a bottom end issue, it could be something going on in the cylinders but otherwise not too bad. Let's take this cover off now that we've got it loose. Oh, it's dirty. Yeah, dirty, but I don't see too much going on here. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Come take a look at this. So what we've got is we've got two very loose spark plugs. That is number four, cylinder four, spark plug is missing. So I wonder what we're gonna find down cylinder number four.
Rusty. But dirty. Let's start working on this head. I think we'll start with our valve train here. I do hope that this breaker bar is long enough. Oh, that's oh, that's really easy. Okay. Well, of course, we're also worried about these mounting points here. So yeah, I don't want to have anything happen that where the engine is going to come off. So we have to just be a little bit conservative about oh, our approach. <laughs> Damn it, that one's quite tough. Oh, there we go. Oh, that one's tight. Pinching. That one's good. Okay. By the way, I'm going to be doing a interesting little video on what a bolt is and what a bolt isn't. This is a bolt, but something that looks very similar with a head like this is potentially not a bolt. So join me for that. And there we have it. This is really, really dirty. No, it's never dirty. Here we are. What the? Okay. Maybe we don't need to be taking this art for head bolts. What in the world? And that is why getting our hands dirty is so important because I actually thought that these covers were hiding the head bolts when in fact we had already taken them out. So our head is off. Let's take a look at this very quickly. Yo, she is dirty. Passages are really gunked up. I mean, our valves look like they're all seated, but you, like I said, really dirty, really carboned up. But that's it, that's our head done. Okay, let's now see what happens when we turn this. And these pistons are right at the top, these ones are quite far down. Doesn't look too bad in these cylinders actually. But of course it was there were some of those sticking points here. Okay. No, it's moving nicely. And just all this all this gunk here though. Otherwise really good. Yeah, that's really actually quite impressive. So let's leave that there and let's look at this gasket and see what we can see. I don't think that there's any concerns here whatsoever. The gasket looks like it's in really, really good shape, in fact. Yeah, I'm really impressed. Okay, and now we, now we twist. Oopsie. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. No, don't worry, nothing. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's coming out there. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are happening all yeah. at once. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's not too bad. 
thought it was going to be much worse. Okay, there we go. Let's get this sump off and see what we see inside. But I'm quite hopeful that this engine is in really decent nick. The condition is pretty darn good. See what we can see. Moment of truth here. Well, kind of truth. I think we're pretty confident. Ooh, <laughs> that's sludge. Darren, come just borrow me your finger quickly. Uh, what do I have here? but no metal. Of course, there was a little bit of crunching, so maybe that is metal, but no sparkles at the very least. Okay, we'll put it, okay. no, no, we'll do it. Oh. Everything here looks and sounds really dirty, but, but sounds really healthy. I mean, there's nothing that I'm certainly picking up, not that I have a wonderfully trained ear, Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come and take the pickup off. Then we're going to start taking yeah, our main caps and things off here as well. Hopefully we'll be able to get the crank out. And yeah, then we're almost done with our teardown. Uh, um, and as far as condition is concerned, I'm really impressed with where it currently is. And there we have our pickup. If you look really closely here, you'll see where the bottom of the distributor makes contact and then turns this to pick up oil and then pushes it through into that passage there and then in through the rest of the engine. Okay, well, I think it is a 14 or 15. Let's try the 14. Yeah, 14. Time to get these pistons out, but I don't think this little guy is going to cut it. So we brought out the, the big guns and now let's get these caps off and pistons out. Hmm. Excellent. So I am thinking about doing a rebuild, a bit of like a restoration type thing on this engine. So let me know in the comments section if you would like to see me putting this back together, that means I have to go and get it cleaned and we'll do all the measuring. We'll try to do it ourselves. But yeah, let me know. It'll be interesting to give that a go and see if we can actually get it to start. It'll be some fun. Let's go like this rather, of course. Come on, stand, don't let us down. Oh, nice and easy. That's why you use long breaker bars. There we go, there we go. There we go. Fantastic. The bearing is still in there. Looks quite nice. Let's look at that bearing quickly though. That's going to tell us a lot more if we can get it out. Not easily, and I don't want to scratch anything, so I don't want to use tools here. Okay, if I push this down a little bit, there we go. We'll be able to get it. But before I do that, let me put the nuts back on. That's a smart way to make sure that they don't get lost. There we go, she's coming out, and there she is. Very nice. The skirts look pretty good, actually. The bearing came out with it, so we'll look at the bearings now. Oh, <laughs> okay, let me, I've got something to show you here. Certainly not the kind of 
the bearing that I would want to be running. Hey, there, there we go. That gives us a good view of it. So this is the, the top cap, not the rod bearing. Uh, so there's definitely pitting there. And if we come here to the journal, okay, I'm going to have to get some way to clean it up. There's nothing that I can feel. So that looks pretty good. It's a little bit scored. You can see those lines there. But otherwise, not bad for if we look at the pitting that's there and we'll keep our bearings together. Great. The cap. Okay, let's push this down. of oil. And then this one, again, skirts are looking good. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That, I wonder where that is. Interesting. I want to see in that cylinder. Interesting. I mean, there's the comparison there and there. So metal floating around in this engine. It's fighting a little bit here. Why is it fighting? Oh, that is not a good bearing. That is not a good bearing at all. Come take a look. Look at that. Look at that. And then when you come to the journal, I mean, it's surprisingly okay. But I mean, thank heavens there's a soft bearing here. But yeah, still nothing that I can feel through the glove. So nothing's catching. But. I, I need to get my nail onto that. We'll take a look at it a little bit later. Spot the difference. Okay, so over here we've got number one, and over here four. I mean, and so if we consider all of these, I mean, look at this. It's absolutely horrendous. But number three, yeah, she looks okay. But the rest of these are terrible. I have got oil everywhere. What I'm doing now is not going to help. So let's get these off. Go. Oh, that was easy. Not so easy. That's a bit better. I don't know why that was so loose. Yo. Yo, this one is a tight one. No, man. Oh, that was a good one. Nice. And nice. Okay. have it. Now that isn't too bad at all. Let's take a feel. A little bit of a ridge, but nothing, nothing. Yeah, that's really good. Very nice. I like that a lot. Again, not bad. There's a little bit of a scratch there. Let's take a look here. That feels great. Nice, okay. Oh, 
or so again, really nice. Oh, tiny little ridge, but yo, it is dirty in here. Come on. Oh no, I'm really silly. You know what I need to do? Yeah, turn the crank. Okay, let me do it with this. Oh, doesn't want to turn. <laughs> uh, I command you to turn. It's not turning. I can't even hold on to these things anymore because they're so full of oil. So we just have to do a bit of cleaning before we do anything else. Okay. And there we go. Lots of space to give it a good old fashioned whack with the dead blow. And that will, there we go, nice. Of course, we're hearing a whole bunch of stuff come out the bottom here. It's a bit disconcerting. But there we go. We're looser, so now we can do a bit of prying here. And if any of you are watching uh, in your mechanics, seasoned mechanics, just uh, help the rest of us out with a technique, maybe a video or just a comment in the section, in the comment section to help us figure out exactly how to take this center cap off without destroying the engine. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave this here and let's get the cam out and then we can get the engine off the stand, get this off and then we'll try and see if we can crack it loose by yanking on both sides of the crank. I think that's, uh, that's gonna be the plan. I've got it still. Good. Okay, yeah, good. I'll be... Okay, so I'm gonna grab it here. And then we're gonna... Yeah, we'll go around your way. Okay. So that's heavy-ish. <laughs> Just right here on the edge. Ah, that wasn't bad. All right. So there are five bolts that we need to get off here at the back. This is uh, where the rear main seal sits. And then we should be able to lift our crank up. Okay, well, I think we're gonna need a bit of a bigger beast. I guess these are really the wrong sockets to be doing this with, but. Oh, yeah. okay, I can see a little bit of Loctite there. Okay. By the way, all of that junk over there that's mixed with the oil comes out of this engine. All of that over there. It's got us congealed together with the oil. So that tells you something about it. Okay, one more. Okay. Let's see. There we go. There we go. And voila, looks okay. But more importantly, let's see if I can get uh, this thing out because I'm gonna do a bit of wiggling. I mean, this thing's heavy in and of itself, but. And that's a, that's a no, negatory. All right, so we've got quite a decent amount of play here now, so I think what I'm gonna be able to do is just, yep, there we go. Okay, oh, <laughs> there we go. And voila. And she's looking really, really good. This is fantastic. I feel almost Arthur-esque, you know, young Arthur as he pulls Excalibur out of the stone. <laughs> so, my first ever crank. And it looks really, really good. And they look really, really good as well. Yeah, I'm pretty darn chuffed with this. And I think that brings us to the end of this teardown video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed the, the tinkering process, sometimes a little bit of frustration. But otherwise, on the whole, quite a lot of fun. 
It's also been quite interesting to see the condition of the engine emerge. All right, if you want to hang around a little bit longer, you'll see us inspecting some of the bearings. So of these bearings, I've picked the worst of the bunch, and there's only one that's really bad, and it's this one that was right on the back of the engine. You'll see just how bad it is over here, but down here, it's not too bad at all. So I don't know what has happened here on top. And then if we come down to the rest of these bearings, I mean, they're in fantastic shape. There's not even any discoloration or anything. So I'm wondering if just before taking this engine out, they had done a lower end job, or if it just hadn't seen all that many Ks. Given the age of the engine, I would assume that it's seen plenty. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more of these, hit the subscribe button, and there'll be plenty more of this to come.